what is the definition of life according to science i read there is no consensus on it death is defined as irreversible cessation of all functions of the brain my question is what keeps us alive and what dies when someone dies because according to the bhagavad gita it's the divine soul that allows the functioning of the insentient matter which we call body and even for layman it sounds extremely commonsensical maybe even except maybe for militant atheists okay there is no signif- there is no one definition of life according to science if you look at it from the perspective of neuroscience there is a certain definition if you look at it from the perspective of biochemistry there is a certain definition if you look at it from the pers- perspective of physics of thermodynamics there is a, a different perspective a different definition so the mainstream definition of life is more bio biochemical in nature life is uh, seen as a biochemical process which itself is problematic because the biochemistry can stop for some time and if it is see for instance there have been instances of people who uh, went into a coma or, or went into a shock kind of uh, state their heart stops and their heart doesn't beat for like 15 20 minutes and then they are successfully revived by shocking their heart or whatever and then they are brought back to life so if the definition is a biochemical definition which would indicate the, the that the heart would stop and various biochemical processes would, would would stop then the person would have died would have been considered to be dead and then when the heart restarts after 20 minutes and the consciousness comes back does it mean that the person came back from death which is not quite true right so there are problems in all the various definitions of life and the reason for that is that life is not a substance it is it is a process what exactly the process is we don't quite know we don't quite know we don't understand the body we don't understand the body well at all if you uh, there is this guy very famous guy what's his name yuval noah harari he says <laughs> he says that the human body is nothing but a hackable machine the human body is a, it's an animal that can be hacked there is no such thing as the spirit or the soul it's uh, all just a, just a set of systems that can be hacked that's what he says so i don't agree with this sort of definition the human body is not a, a machine with a set of systems that are interconnected lots of scientists have such uh, perspectives lots of scientists have very different perspectives but but the, but those perspectives now become mainstream see in the west today you have this commercialization there is this reduction of the human being to a commodity you are just one uh you, you are sim- you are simply part of the big market and they want to commodify everything even the uh pha- even the pharmaceutical industry is commodified even healthcare is commodified so they want to hack human beings they want to even they want to reduce human beings to mere numbers and and commodities and in that system uh the idea of the spirit and the soul is very problematic because then you have to treat human beings and all life differently not just as numbers and commodities the problem is that from the de- from the perspective of science there is no definition of life there is no definition of soul there is no definition of spirit so now when we talk about the bhagavad gita we are no longer talking about science so we have to understand this very correct <laughs> very very uh, carefully that science is about i have said this many times let me repeat it science is about physical uh what is science about science about is is about physical objects and uh, observable and measurable phenomena spirit spirituality is about non physical objects also and non physical non observable phenomena also so when you talk about the soul and the spirit we are no longer talking about science we are talking about either philosophy or spirituality right so from the perspective of science there is no definition of soul or spirit because a soul or a spirit cannot be observed it cannot be measured right so uh so you have scientists who say that the human emotions are nothing but chemical reactions i don't agree with that it's as if we understand everything and that's all it is we don't understand the brain we don't understand the mind we don't understand the body we don't understand our genes more than 95% of the genome is not understood at all and they call it the dark matter of the genome 
and yet people are trying to hack the G, the human genome and do all the genetic engineering they don't even understand what could happen what could be the consequences you understand less than 2% of the human genome but you want to start hacking around so that is the kind of approach that we have today without understanding things we want to start modifying things right so the truth is we understand almost next to, to nothing about our genome we understand next to nothing about our neurochemistry about the human brain about the human mind we don't know what consciousness is we don't have a definition of consciousness is consciousness an emergent phenomenon that emerges out of the complexity of our of our brain or is it something else altogether we don't know we don't have the answer we don't even have a proper definition of life i mean viruses according to various definitions of life viruses are half living half dead they do have dna they do reproduce but they have some characteristics that are more consistent with the properties of crystals and non living objects than living objects so this is a complex field life doesn't have a clear definition the consciousness itself which does exist we know it exists so it is something that does exist it is not an unmeasurable phenomenon it is an observable phenomenon but we don't quite have a definition of that and maybe the consciousness is what is connected to what is known in philosophy and spirituality and religion as the soul or the spirit so we don't quite know our our understanding of science is very rudimentary it is very limited there are plenty of scientists who like to prevent uh, who like to pretend like we like science can explain everything science cannot explain lots of things it doesn't mean that science is wrong it means that our level of intelligence is able to perceive only a certain amount of science and the and that our understanding of science is very limited it doesn't mean science is wrong maybe in the future science will be able to deal with things like consciousness and other such things as well so that's what i can say i don't know what keeps us alive what dies when someone dies we no but no scientist has the answer uh, our ancients our philosophers our 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 great gurus rishis etc did have did have the answers those answers can be found in our scriptures in our upanishads in the vedas in the bhagavad gita etc but that cannot be brought into the realm of science because it is not science the, the vedas the bhagavad gita these are spiritual and philosophical texts civilizational and cultural texts these are not scientific texts so science is very limited in its scope and science cannot explain what life and death are what the spirit is what the soul is if it does exist and what consciousness is which does exist so these are the the significant limit, limitations that science uh, is constrained by